Who's with every women's basketball? I'm at qualifier for the NCAA tournament, NCAA Division One women's basketball tournament. Who's going to win every conference? I'm at qualifying bid. Which I'm at qualifying bid is basically who wins the conference tournament for in each of the 32 conferences, and the at-large bids are determined by who plays like. You know, who has like the best resumes, who plays like the best teams during the regular season, you know, and stuff like that. But, but it's kind of nice that they give a shot to every conference, even though some of those teams may not be like the best teams, you know, in the tournament. It's just kind of awesome, you know, that they get a fair shot. And these schools have something to play for, these all schools do. But anyways. And then with especially the NIT, the big ones, the NIT, and, the, um, and these other tournaments, you have something to play for too. You know, if you don't make the big tournament, I think it's awesome. Or especially if it's low schools. But anyways, um, in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, we have Fairfield with 10 and 5 there on um, first place. Siena is also with 0 and 0 and 10, now they're 4 and 2. So they've been playing really good basketball lately. So see, and I could squeak by, and then you have some teams that are like four and three, but I think Fairfield's the overall um, winner. Why? Because Fairfield just been playing really well in conference play. And Fairfield was three and five, now they're ten and five. So they were probably had a tougher, tough conference schedule with losing five games, and winning three. So they've had a tough schedule. They've been playing really, really solid it's basketball, which is something you need going into um, the tournament. Especially your conference tournament or your conference schedule. Um, and they have uh, 11 teams. This limit run is like comes as they were beat 7 out of 10. They've had to play, so that's a pretty good schedule. It's like, so. They, so. And then RDM. And then Steen is 4 and 2. So Mammoth is doing. So you have Mammoth becomes the 6 1 because of COVID. Postponements or cancellations or something like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, so maybe some of these teams like Cena Mama might squeak by it, but who knows? I mean, just think Fairfield's like over leaps and over, but Cena's peaking though at the right time. Cena is though, so you have to run 0 and 10, and now 4 and 10, so you know, so you never know. So some of these teams are in hot and they might stay hot. You know, you know, but but if Fairfield can beat CNO again, if they play again, or if they haven't played yet, then it may be Fairfield. Then we can see, you know, if some of these teams are hot, you know, or near the top, you know. So, but yeah, and then uh, Matt, the main elite comes, they just do um, east and west, but now they don't. They just do one straight line. And the top is Toledo and Buffalo. Toledo and Buffalo have not played yet. This season, so um, I think it might come down to that because there are a bunch of teams who are two and two by Ohio, Boston, Bowling Green, and there's Akron who's four and two, Western Michigan's three and one. There's a bunch of teams who are pretty closely to each other, so I could see some teams being like four and three or three and three or two and three. And they're just getting like tough breaks, you know. They can't stay. They're getting tough breaks, same as like Ball State, you know. Then I could see, so, but Buffalo has not lost on the road or at home yet. And they are um, they lost a couple games at neutral sites. So you don't lost the game at neutral site and one game at neutral site. Neutral site. So, um, I mean it's just really really good basketball that these comes that Toledo and Buffalo play. They're like peaking at the right time. Like Toledo is peaking, just playing really good during non conference. Playing six and three non conference, which is pretty good. Same with Buffalo playing like a six and four non conference. That's still pretty good. You know? Um, so these teams are just peaking at the right times during like conference play. What you need to do, you know? You need to peak. You need your peak to be during like conference play. You need to play your best during conference. And yeah, you can play your non but if, but if you play well during non-conference, it upsets you up for them. 
good seed in the NCAs, but your peak, your peak where you should play the absolute best is conference play because even if you don't win a single non-conference game, as long as you play well in conference, that can help boost you and make it to NCAs. So, but I think it's going to be Toledo and Buffalo are going to are going to be the top. I think, but then I think if someone sweeps my upsets of these two, I think um, I just think um, but Toledo and Buffalo are going to make it to the top. So especially Toledo playing seven games haven't lost one yet. So they've already played seven of the eleven teams. So, you know, so that shows you, you know. But then we have. The Mid Eastern Athletic Conference. The Mid Eastern Athletic Conference. There's a bunch of teams with like 2 0 and 1 0 records. So, uh, are playing um, NC Central, like the 1 0 Howards. Norfolk, so they're going to run. Howard, Norfolk State, and South Carolina State. And then Coppin State's playing Morgan State. And you meet me, yes, so. Northeastern Eastern Shore and Morgan State, so. Kind of a little unfair, you know, to see who's really going to win this conference. Delaware State hasn't played in it, so I think it's really going to be unfair who wins the conference, who doesn't. Um, but I think it's going to be who wins the conference tournament. Um, you know, because there's only two teams, and you know, like South Carolina State just beat in their central. But I mean, there's all these teams who are like 0 and 9, like 4 and 9, 6 and 5. The teams that aren't really like 1 and 11, 4 and 9, like 1 and 9, 5 and 7. You know, teams that aren't, you know, aren't really the strongest teams, but they're pretty decently matched up against evenly matched teams in the conference. So, we'll see though. And the Missouri Valley. Illinois State is the favorite, 5 of them. But just because they played one buddy and then Miss, um, Missouri State, Southern Illinois, Indiana State. I think, you know, uh, Illinois State um, could win, but I think the favorite, though, is um, Mississippi, um, not Mississippi State, um, Missouri State. They're the favorites because they haven't won lost at home. They're 4 and 2 in the road, and they're 1 and 1 in a neutral state. Um, in a tournament, so. Not regular season tournament, so. But I think Missouri State should win. Unless something happens where, like, you know, they get upset. But, otherwise, I think Missouri State's got the win that pretty easily. And they made it to the Sweet 16 last year. So I think Missouri State could make it, could upset someone in, like, a, could beat someone in, like, a round of 64. Possibly even a round of 32, you know. Couldn't be, like, a BYU. Last season, you know, the Mountain West Conference, New Mexico 6-0. Nevada is 4 and 1. I think Nevada. I th and UNLV is 6 and 1. But I think it's gonna. Honestly, I think New Mexico, Nevada, UNLV can win. Are gonna win the conference title. Maybe there could be a team like, um. Like, you know, down below, like. Uh, oops, I mean. There's 11 teams, and I think there could be a team that gets upset, like. Like someone. You could upset like one of these top teams in the conference tournament, but you know, but it's gonna. Be, I th but if all eleven teams get make it the conference tournament, which I believe they do, um, so I mean, there's some teams on the bottom that are gonna have to play games, and then and then the teams on top will get by. So I think that'll help them out a day. So, you know, so we'll see. Well, you never know, there, there could be a team that gets like, you know, upsets and wins. But I think um, New Mexico, UNLV could make the case for two bids. One of these teams could make the case for multiple bids, like two bid, bid league, make it a two bid league. Maybe like, you know, like UNLV, New Mexico could make, you know, make it a two bid league. Maybe even Nevada could make a two bid league. We'll see though. Um, but for right now, I think it's yeah, so you and I, and then maybe possibly someone else would have two bids. Another bid, depending on you. 
There's a qualification there, you have to play 25 games before the NCAA tournament, so. We'll see though. Mm, so maybe there's a, there's a like, big news ball comments as well. No model lives. But anyway, uh, where's these comments? Well, this is the comments that has a forfeit policy. And you can see all these teams are like, have won a couple games. Probably because of forfeits. And have lost some games because of forfeits. You can see right here. Um, But for FDU has not had any really COVID issues themselves. They have only 6 and 1. And then St. Francis Brooklyn 4 and 3. Wagner 4 and 3. Mount St. Mary's 4 and 3. Seahart 4 and 3. St. Francis PBA 4 and 3. But that's a lot of these are, I think, forfeits and stuff like that. Like some teams had to play a kit, so they need to because of them. And then the forfeit policies, so that's what I was thinking all these like four and threes are. So I don't know. So I think it's gonna be like who can win the conference tournament. I think the top eight make the conference tournament in the Northeast Conference, so I think it's gonna be who can win the conference tournament. Who can like you know I think it's gonna be who can like because all these teams are evenly matched. I think a team could go on the road in the conference tournament, steal a game. That's what I think, honestly. I, mean, I don't, don't. I wouldn't be surprised if someone does steal a game. Like St. Francis Brooklyn steals a game with St. Francis PA, or you know, vice versa. You know, one team steals it, another. You know, I wouldn't be surprised one bit. You know, someone goes on the road steals a game. And all the other tournaments, like they've been telling you about, are um. Where like the teams may get by, or like top so many teams may get by. And they play like a regular standard tournament. Except like some of these conferences, where, like the teams get like double buys. Some of them get like double buys. If they're like the top so many, some get single buys. You know, so. Because you gotta fact, you know, so. But then there's some conferences where they get like. Um, so then. Only so many teams play if every team, you know. So then every team can play like single games to make the championship. But in the high value they do it where um right the one two seats get like the bias size. The three and fours get the quarter final by the fives and sixes get um by the second round. And then the seven, eight, nine, ten have to play in the first round, which is really gonna be tough. So because of that, I think Belmont and Tennessee State have the favor right now. But I mean Austin B and Tennessee Tech are also really strong right now. Same with Murray State right now. But it's, I think it's really going to be tough for the team to live on. They'll play because they have to play first round is one. You have to play five games to make it to the championship game. Whereas the top teams, they only have to play two games to make it to the top. Which is root to the championship, which is a lot easier than having to win. And having to play five days in a row and win five straight like, that's just rough. So, I think um, Tennessee Tech's going to... I think um, Tennessee State Belmont's going to advance. But also, I could see some of these teams, like, depending on what how they so, how the standings fall at the end. You know, I'm going to do this, like, every so often. Not every so week, but might do one, like, like you know, middle of next month or something like that. And then I might do one, like, before a conference tournament time kicks off. Just so... And when the seeds kick off before like this first conference tournaments kick off, just so I can like sh say like who is the favorite going into these tournaments, you know, and stuff like that. So, but I think Belmont, Tennessee State are the favorite advantage right now. But then Austin Peay and Tennessee Tech, maybe Murray State if they squeak in that four, maybe someone who's playing who gets the three and four seed and get it by the quarters, could win. I think you could win three in a row. And make it to a tournament. I really think you could. But. But then it's also going to be because. Some teams might forfeit. They have to forfeit games. You know they might have to forfeit games. Because of COVID. And then. And then they're out of the tournament. That's good. It's going to be rough too. But then they might. If they can push back the tournament. Make the game as long as they can. They can push back some of these tournament games. A little of like it, if they're, especially if they're played on like home sites, so push them back a little bit so they allow the other team to make like a forfeit, no forfeit, or something like that, you know, not have to forfeit or something like that, or you know, 
Um, we'll see them. You know. And then in Pac-12, it's really tough because there are a bunch of teams that are like battling to Stanford could win. But I think the best shot of winning the conference tournament right now is Stanford. Even though um, Oregon's peaking at the right, right time. I think Oregon, though, has a shot, too, because they're peaking at the right time in the conference. And Colorado's, they're 13 or they're falling out, like, bad. So some of these teams, I think, like, um, Oregon. I think Oregon's peaking at the right time. Arizona's playing decently. But Arizona, they get upset by Oregon. But I think Stanford's peaking at the right time. Same with, um, Oregon. Stanford and Oregon are really soft. It's a really strong non-conference and a really strong conference here. Oregon's playing had injuries in the non-conference. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, are they for real? But they've been proving me wrong. They're for real. Arizona State now has not played a game in a while. And they need to be covered out in a convincing fa- in pretty good fashion and defensively. So that's, they've been proving me wrong. You know, Arizona State has. Showed, showed why they're pretty solid. Yeah. But I think come tournament time, Stanford and Oregon are the favorites to win the tournament. The tournament. That doesn't mean make the NCAAs, um, but to just um, make, like, the, win the conference to get on at qualifier. Stanford, Oregon have the best shot. Maybe there could be an upset, like Arizona or something like that. Maybe some upsets, but who you knows right now. In the Patriot League, top 20 teams make the Patriot League turn. I believe it's the top 8 make the Patriot League turn. Oh, top 10. Maybe all of them, who knows, but... I don't believe in the Patriot League there's a uh, neutral site. It's just fun. Play at home sites. So, that's going to favor the top teams. I think but, no, maybe, um, Boston College is the best. And the uh, uh, Cross could beat Boston, but Boston University. But um, yeah, American and Lafayette, they could all win, like a game or two. They could all like, steal a game. You know, some of these teams are like two losses could steal a game versus someone. And that could make like the things a little more dicier in the tournament. So I think some of these teams could be dicier. You know, in the tournament, makes things dicey. You know, so we'll see. We'll see. Um. But I think it's really going to run on the conference tournament. Can Boston win? Can Holy Cross win? Or can there be an upset? And that changes dynamics, you know? In the Southeastern Conference. You know, where like, teams get double eyes and teams get single eyes. And I think it's really going to figure the top. Like, like, right now. Like, right now, I think... Um, Tennessee's playing really solid. But I think to prove themselves, they got to be young. South Carolina, they have to beat LSU. They did beat Ole Miss, I believe. They beat Ole Miss. And then they beat Georgia. I don't know if they beat Georgia yet, but a lot of these top teams, if Tennessee just keeps steam on, like, these teams, like, beats these teams, like, by a few points here, a few points there, it adds up as big quality wins. And, and like, a really stack lead, you know, beating these teams is huge, you know. Like, if Tennessee, South Carolina meet up, Tennessee, LSU meet up, you know, some of these really, really, really solid teams, and they beat them, and that's just huge momentum we're heading into the tournament, and into the SEC tournament. And then we got the South, Southern Conference. We got eight teams in the Southern. You know, well, oh, so, but I think all these eight teams, Wofford, huh? Wofford, this do you know? Mercer is one, and UT Tennessee shirt. Chenu. Tennessee Chenu is doing permanent streaming. I think the best shot right now is um, Mercer at 4 1, and they're 8 and er, 11 and 6 overall. Wofford, though, has the best conference record at 4 1, 3 0. But Mercer's played a little more. So I think Mercer has the best shot to win the conference tournament. But. We'll see though in the southern. We'll see though. I mean, you know, it just depends on who's the favorite, who's the, like, you know. But I think Mercer is the best shot. Unless Mercer plays Chan, but I think Mercer could still be Chan. 
on some of these teams. I think Mercer is the best shot to win. You can kind of see it in the other in the overall records. Wise, but you never know, there could be an upset in the Southland. These eight teams in the Southland. I think the best shot right now. I think it's kind of tight right now. Some of these teams, even though they don't have the best records, like six, 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 and seven, you know, eight, eight and four, you know, they're still winning, finding a way to win games. So I think the best shot to win is um, the conclusions of like Tixie and Corpus Cummers, Southern Eastern Louisiana, Eastern Baptist. I think those top teams have to battle each other to really prove themselves tonight. And then if someone can win bo against both those teams, they go into four and all. Then I really think it can like do a momentum swing. Hmm. They prove themselves. But in the sweat, I see right now Jackson State with the best that's to win the sweat. Oh, sweat, please. Auckland could win. Alabama State too. Could win um East as well with five and nine. Some of these teams don't have the best records, but they're matching they're pretty even matchups in conference. That's kinda of tricky. But I think Jackson State could beat um Alabama State, we'll see though. Or unless they already played each other. Which they might have in Jackson State already a five and a record and then Southern and UAPB could be I, mean, I don't know what's going to be determined. It's going to be tough going to this conference tournament. Because you know, I think Ted Southern could win. You know, could sweep by previewing UAPB, Southern, Alabama, Jackson State. All these teams all could be upset someone. You know, and then, and then all these conference races are a ton of, like, pretty, even, pretty tough. And then they're battling, like, the very end, like, the seedings. So that and like, like the, they could be a six seed overall in the term, but you know, they could be like a three seed, and they are like the same record, or like you know what I mean. So it's like no really advantage, you know, unless they like, they play a neutral site or they play at home. You know, there might not be an advantage. Even so, there might not be an advantage though. To that, in the summit league, um, South Dakota I think is the favorite. They already beat South Dakota State. I think South, South Dakota is getting votes in the AP poll, and they deserve it, you know why? I think the South Dakota actually deserves to be them. I would rank them in the my AP poll, my top 25, but I think they need to go 10-0 in conference play, just to be ranked. I think they need to, and that would be um, 1-11-0 um, in conference play, because they would have to win 9-0, it would be this week's, and then they play a game on Thursday, and they play a game on... Saturday, and that would make them propel them to 11 and all. That would propel them to in conference. I think if they can do that, they can win. But I think what they really need to do is just to win the overall bid. I think South Dakota. I think if South Dakota State beats um, South Dakota in the conference tournament, maybe South Dakota could get a. I'm a bit, or a, a, a large, I think, possibly. Um, I think South Dakota State could beat South Dakota. Maybe, but I, South Dakota did beat South Dakota State in the regular season. So South Dakota State beats twice over South Dakota. Or South Dakota, excuse me, South Dakota beats South Dakota State twice in the regular season. I think it's going to be tough for South Dakota State to win. Conference tournament, but it's hard to beat a team three times. But I think South Dakota has to go 11 0 for SW making it happen. So 9 0 today, they played their last game. They're playing at St. Thomas, Minnesota. So then South Dakota can beat them. They can beat St. Thomas. I think they can beat. I think and then they can win their next two conference games. Rematches at the other site. They can be in my top 25, I think. And they've already gotten four votes in AP, so they might, if they win, 
Today's all we get, like more about CAP, obviously. And uh, the more they keep winning conference, the more they get votes. Votes, because they played a really tough non-conference. And they were showing, and they were proven, and they did pretty well in it. You know, having to play South Carolina in the tournament. You know, and, like, and having to play, like, Arizona. And then, like, the third place game, they had to play like, Arizona. And, or, like, we don't like that game. They had, like, marquee teams, even though they didn't win. They still played really so Sunbelt, no. Sunbelt has like policy where they put where there is some for um no forfeit. It's no postponement series of cancels cancellations. So some of these teams are like two and one and three and two. Yeah. Four and two, you know. There it's kinda of really hard to predict like three and two or two and one. Is a two and one team really good? You know, because Appalachian State could have played a game against say Louisiana and Roll that got canceled. Or a game against Georgia State or a game against like South Alabama. I got canceled. And not po- rescheduled. So it's kind of like who was playing, who's better than who, you know? You know, like, that's hard to tell. Like is South Alabama better than Appalachian State? Or is um Texas State better than South Alabama? You know what I mean? It's kind of like hard to tell, you know, who's better than who. Because a lot of these teams have forfeit, have cancellation games on their record. And they they're don't count as, like, their conference or overall records. So it's kind of tough to tell, but... So I think this, this, this scandal is up for it. going to be determined in the tournament. Just because all these teams have played, like, cancellation games. And that's what I think is really going to play, is if they play each other once, or if they get cancelled. Some two, both teams, they might match up twice in the regular season, and both those matchups might get cancelled. So, you know, you don't know who plays who, who's better than who until, like, the tournament. You know, as if you've never played each other in the regular season, you know, so. You don't know, really. It's kind of like, so. I think it's going to be Sunbelt. Um, is... Maybe up for grabs in the tournament. The West Coast Conference. I think who's going to win the West Coast Conference is either BYU or Gonzaga. And I think that because... Um, 